Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at the Intel HPC Developer Conference in Salt Lake City, and I'm here with Ananth from Intel. How are you doing today, sir? Good, how are you, Rick? Good, nice good, good. Hey, let's start at the beginning. Uh, I understand you had a talk today. Can you tell us what that was about? That's right, so my talk was on accelerating machine learning on Intel architecture. So really, you know, we have, we have significant investments in optimizing a variety of frameworks, so some more machine learning, some more deep learning specifics, with new capabilities and features we, are, we have coming in Intel Silicon platforms. We want to expose all those goodness to those variety, frame, variety of frameworks. So that's really uh, the talk. So we got into specificity on which specific libraries we're optimizing and how. Okay, because I wanted to ask you about that. What kind of software frameworks are your customers asking for to, to get running well on the Intel architecture? Right, so those are statistics that recently got published that there's new two to three new frameworks that come to market every every month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we specifically drive our, our prioritization based on what we're hearing from the customers. Uh, Spark, which is a, you know, predominantly a big data machine learning type framework, that's key framework that we are continuing to optimize. And then um, TensorFlow, which is uh, Google introduced TensorFlow as an open source project, and uh, we have significant investments and optimizations going on in that space as well. And uh, Berkeley has come up with a framework called CAFE. Um, so that's uh, something that we are continuing to optimize on. The default CAFE is optimized for single node only, so we, are, we have taken that for code base and optimized it to run on, efficiently run on multiple Xeon and Xeon 5 based platforms. So some of the optimizations we're driving. Um, as new frameworks come in, you know, get introduced to the market, we'll certainly we'll look into it, but you know, predominantly those three to five frameworks is where we are kind of investing most of our software expertise on. I wanted to ask you about deep learning. You know, typically there's the two sides, right? right. You, the training and the inference, right? right. Which sides are you working on for Intel, or what would you say? Actually, you know, both are important. Yeah. The training stage is where you teach the machines what to look for, right? And, and inference is where you're using the, the trained model. When you have a new sample, this machine, the trained machine, can predict what the outcome can be, mm -hmm. right? So both are equally important. The more data you have, the longer it takes to train, right? So that's where our story is to, you know, Fitting it, all, the whole problem within a single compute node is not going to help us solve larger problems. So we're kind of investing heavily on scale-out architectures. So if you take the problem, we run it on hundreds of thousands of Xeon or Xeon Pi's, what opportunities you have? Because time to train is more important. So we kind of continue our investment to reduce the time to train so that you can come up with a model that, that predicts with high accuracy. And then once you have the model, you want to also use it to predict with many data sample samples at a time with high accuracy. So we're optimizing for both. So all the libraries that we have coming helps uh, both in training as well as in inference. I want to step back here. You know, this conference is all about developers. Right. And Intel, of course, has this suite of developer tools. How, how are you using those to attack this problem Absolutely. of, of you scale? Know, I think, uh, in, in fact, the talk, my specific talk was on four specific areas where yeah. uh, we are giving the opportunity for the developers to not only try the library offerings from Intel, so we have taken a step ahead in, in making some of those libraries available in open source. For example, the math kernel library, which is predominantly used in a variety of HPC functions, we have come up with MKL capability for deep neural networks, so deep learning space. So that is open source. So we not only have the ability to share what we have, but we are inviting the community, developer community, to contribute and optimize the codes for Intel architecture. And we're doing it one level above on the data analytics acceleration libraries. So it's a common theme. You know, we, we certainly are, are kind of getting into an era where open source community is starting to innovate faster than it has been in the past. And we want to kind of get into that as well with our library offerings.